Hi, this is Julie with Beadaholic, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Regalese corduroy rubber bracelet. I have a couple examples here of already finished pieces, and you can see this one has a little bit of bead weaving on it, and they've got some great clasps. And then I want to show you from start to finish how to make one. I also want to talk to you a bit about how to estimate how much of this corduroy rubber you're going to need to order. It's great because it's sold by the inch, so you can order just what you need, but I always recommend ordering actually a little bit of extra because it's not very expensive. And you're gonna need some beads. I'm gonna make this bracelet here, which is kinda like a peace and love theme, but you can do whatever you want. There's a wide variety of beads, but I have a peace symbol slider bead right here. I've got these rubber O-rings, which are really flexible, and they actually work as great bead stoppers. And then I've got a clasp as well. And then to glue my cord into my clasp, I have this product called Super New Glue. It's very, very strong. It gives you a great bond. Oftentimes you'll hear me recommend E6000 glue. I do not recommend that for this particular project. Definitely pick up the Super New Glue. In terms of tools, you're basically just going to need a cutter. And I've got this little cut by Beadsmith, which works great. You can see it's got this great diagonal blade, which is gonna give me a really nice flush cut. And then to help figure out the measuring and just to explain this a little bit to you better, I've got a ruler here. I have a bracelet mandrel where I've gone ahead and I've made notes of the inches of how big of a bracelet along the way. And then I'm actually gonna do a little math with you on paper just to make it hopefully make a little bit more sense. So we're going for a seven and a half inch bracelet, which is a pretty standard bracelet size. You're going to want to measure your wrist to begin with to figure out how big of a bracelet you want, but your wrist measurement is not your bracelet measurement. So, you know, a wrist measurement is gonna be really tight. And so you don't want that. You wanna give yourself an extra half an inch or even a full inch so that you can wear these a little bit more uh, loosely and they're not too tight on your wrist. So seven and a half is a pretty average size. So I'm gonna do that in the video here. So first off, what I wanna show you before I even start assembling this, is if we're going for a seven and a half inch bracelet, one might assume that it takes seven and a half inches of corduroy rubber to go around it. So if that's my seven and a half inch mark, I wanna show you what that equals on the ruler. And you can see it's almost eight and a half inches. So right off the bat, you know, if you are trying to do an eight inch bracelet, you gotta bump that up to nine inches. If you're doing seven and a half, you gotta bump it up to eight and a half. So you have to add an inch. Now, I'm just going to put these beads on. And I'm sliding on the rubber O-ring first. And now I'm going to slide on a couple of these great colorful beads and another O-ring. And look what this does. The O-rings act as stopper beads. So you can put them as tightly up to your beads as you want, or you can make them a little bit looser. But that's gonna be a great way of holding your bracelet beads together and where you want them positioned on the bracelet. Okay, so I've got them on. And remember, so we want a seven and a half inch bracelet and then automatically we had to bump that up to eight and a half inches of cord, just straight on the mandrel. And now let's see what happens when we add our beads. Put the beads in the back. Okay, so where that overlaps. Okay, you see what's happening is kind of causing it to bow away a little bit. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration. So this is where it overlapped. If we put this down on our ruler, that eight and a half now just added a quarter of an inch and it's more like eight and three quarters. So we need to add one fourth of an inch for beads. And you can see how many beads I have here that equal that. We did put a few more beads on and it wasn't that much of a difference. It didn't suddenly bump up to half an inch or three quarters inch more needed. But if you were going to chalk this full of beads, you would want to increase it by even more than a quarter. So right now, as it stands, is eight and three quarters inches of cord for a seven and a half inch bracelet. But we need to add the clasp. 
and the clasp is actually gonna cause us to use less cord. So, okay, sorry for the math. I do apologize for this, but I hope it helps you. So you on the website, we do list the length of each clasp. This particular one is 41 millimeters. And then on each side where your cord is going to fit in, there's a glue recess. And on this particular clasp, each recess is six millimeters. So we need to times that by two, which will give us 12 millimeters. And we times it by two because we've got one on each side. So we're gonna now minus 12 millimeters from 41, which is gonna give us 29 millimeters. And you'll probably remember that 25.4 millimeters is one inch. There's a lot of conversion charts online. You can even type in, you know, convert millimeters to inches and you'll pop up a conversion chart online if you want. So I already did this and 29 equals 1.14 inches which we're gonna call one and one eighth inch. Okay, so that is what we're left with that we need to subtract from our eight and three quarters inches because you're not gonna have cork right here. Cork is gonna be filling these recesses, but here's a gap and we still wanna end up with a seven and a half inch bracelet. So we're gonna minus this from our cork total. Okay, so we had eight and three quarters, which you can also say is eight and six eighths. And we're gonna minus the one and one eighth, which is gonna give us seven and five eighths inches. And if you're saying, I don't wanna do all this math, this is complicated. If you have your wrist and you're just trying to fit it to yourself, you know, you can really just estimate on a larger scale of what you think you're going to need and then slowly trim down your cord until it feels comfortable. But this is really good to know in terms of if you're making these for sale or you're ordering a bunch, it will definitely help. All right, so I'm ready to cut. I know I need seven and five eighths inches. So I'm gonna line it up on my ruler. So there is the seven and five eighths inches. And I'm not concerned about making a mark on my cord because I'm gonna stick it into the glue recess. But I do wanna measure twice and cut once on this. And you know what I'm gonna do, just so that this gives you a little bit more help, hopefully. I'm gonna cut it a little large, just to be safe. So let me put my clasp on. And this is another good tip. Don't glue your clasp right away. Put it on there and test it. All right, so I expect this to be a little big. Yep, it's a little bit big. So now I'm gonna cut it down a little bit more. And like I said, if you're at home and you're making this for yourself, you can just do this. You can purchase a little bit of extra cord and then just slowly cut it down in increments. Again, I think this is gonna be a little big. Yep. So I'm gonna cut it to that original mark I had, but I did wanna show you how easy it is to just cut down. Okay, so see the original mark? Cutting it. And now let's try this on the mandrel. And there we go. So we have seven and a half inches. Like, whoops, again, our clasp is not glued yet, so now I'd be comfortable to glue my clasp. And a good general rule of thumb uh, when ordering the cord is round up and order an extra inch. So I would have rounded this to eight and then I would have ordered nine inches because I would have added an extra inch just so I had some room to breathe a little bit. And that's really good too if you're putting on a lot of beads. Okay, so now what you're gonna do, take your clasp off and this one is nice and easy because it pulls apart. You're gonna take your glue, take the lid off Go ahead, put a drop in the middle of your glue recess, swirl it around a little bit so that it covers the entire base. Take one end of your corduroy rubber, stick it in, and then make sure you hold it for about a minute. Once that's created a bond, go ahead and repeat that same step on the other side. Again, put the glue into the recess, swirl it around, 
put the cord into the glue and into that half of the clasp and hold it for about a minute. And then what you're going to want to do is just let your project dry overnight. Give it a good 24 hours just to make sure everything is secure. And that is how you measure and assemble a Wrigley's corduroy rubber bracelet. And like I said, don't be too afraid of the math. It can be a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite simple. And then you can always just order a little bit of extra Wrigley's cord and then just slowly cut it down into the size you want. That's also a very easy method.